is Catherine Sturrock and I'm here today at Katie Sue headquarters. I'm going to show you how to work with the Sugar Buttons Pirate. Now I'm going to show you two different versions. We're going to start with what is the easiest version. So anyone who's new to this or maybe finds it a little bit tricky um, to put the separate colours into the mould, which we are going to touch on later, we are going to start with the easiest version. So I'm just going to show you a couple of samples just so you can see what you can make. Now here I've got one of the pirates. It's all in his red and white uh, with his blue jeans on and that's been done with the mould using polymer clay. But you can also adapt the mould as well. So if you wanted to turn the pirate boy into a pirate girl, you can do that. And that's quite easily done. So I'm going to talk you through how you can adapt the mould at the end of the video as well. So another thing that you can do, if I just bring in one more sample, is you can shape the characters. So this one has been sat against a box and I've used the pirate accessories which are available in a separate mould as well just to decorate this little box. So just by bending the clay and putting him in a sitting position you can change the character as well. So first things first we're going to work with the easiest method. Now I've from feedback I've found that people um, do like to, you know, they often ask me questions, give, can I give hints and tips? This is probably my favourite tip, the one that I would say is probably most important, but one of the simplest ones. If you're going to paint your character, if you're going to choose an acrylic paint or something to paint all the detail in, most people tend to go straight for the white clay from the pack and then into the mould and paint all the colours. The hardest thing to paint is the skin tone, and this is where some people fall down. So if you don't need to paint the skin tone, why do it? The easiest way to get around it is to take the white hearty clay, which I've got here, and use something like a gel food colouring or a paint, or you could actually use some of the hearty. I've got a little bit of the red here. Um, there is an orange available as well. You could go with a very small amount of red or a very small amount of orange and just mix into the clay. Gel food colouring is a good source of um, a product that's really good for decor for colouring the clay as well because it's a very highly concentrated product so you need the tiniest amount without it changing the consistency of the clay. So just work in the colour that does give me quite a pink shade. You're not looking for something dark unless of course you want to change the tone of the skin in which case you can add uh, further colours into that. But you want something that's quite subtle because as the, the clay dries it does tend to darken very slightly. Now on screen that may look almost white still but if I was put, to put the two together you can see that there is a difference. So I'm just going to put that fresher clay to one side because I have mixed a colour earlier and I've had this out in the, the air to dry a little bit. I prefer it to dry a little bit before using it because the clay can be too wet from the pack and you'll find that you may have difficulty getting the clay out of the mould if the clay is too wet. I will come back to that and I'll give you a few more hints and tips along the way. So first things first, we're going to take the mould and I'm going to use just a little bit of corn flour just to dust out the mould. This is to get rid of any excess moisture that may be in there. Maybe if you've had it stored somewhere and there's been a bit of condensation or maybe you've washed the mould with warm soapy water and it's still got a slight bit of damp in there. Any moisture will make the clay stick so they need to be perfectly dry. So a little bit of corn flour, you can tap out any excess if you need to and then we're ready to go. So I'm going to take some of the skin tone clay and what I'm going to do is just roll it into a ball so it's nice and smooth and then more into a sausage shape just so that it feeds down the centre of the mould. I just find it helps to spread it around a little bit more evenly if I start in the centre. If you've got too much clay then that's very easy just to remove it. If you haven't got enough you can top it up. Now another tip that I can give you, before you colour the clay, if you want to push some clay into the mould first, so it was just maybe the white clay, so you can gauge how much you need and then colour it, you're not going to over mix. If you're making a batch of characters then you might need more and you, you don't need to worry about it so much, but why mix too much of one colour? So that is a good tip as well. Just work out the amount of clay you need and then add the colour. Now with the pirate there are a couple of little what we call posts that stick up and they tend to be just inside of the arm. He's got his hands on his hips but there are a couple of little posts that show through so there's one just coming through there. 
if I scrape the clay away, there's the other one there. So it is best not to cover those up and to leave them showing through. So I can see I've actually got more clay than I need in there. So I'm just going to work my fingertips and just push out any excess clay. So that looks a little bit better around the head. Take care of the neck. You don't want to make it any wider than it needs. So you can see the outline coming through. And then if I just turn that round, I can probably just push away some of the clay towards the bottom as well. Make sure it's gone right down into those feet. Your mold isn't going to break, so you can, you know, you can be firm with this. You don't have to worry about doing any damage. And what we're looking for is a nice fill level with this outer lip of the mold. When you're about there, take a rolling pin and just roll over and you can press quite firmly. Where the face is, if you just sort of press down rather than roll in too vigorously, it stops the features distorting a little bit. And this way as well, if you have still got excess clay, it tends to show up. So you can see that at the bottom of the feet, I can just remove that little overhang of clay there. And then it's time to tidy up the mould. So using a fingertip, just pull in the clay from the outer edge inside. So we're just taking away any of those little tatty edges so we can see a nice clean outline. If you do miss any bits, you can trim them off with scissors afterwards, but it's nice to get that clean finish as you work. Remember, you can leave the little poles showing, so they're not a problem there. And then we're ready to release the clay. The lip around the outer edge of the mould is very useful. Just by flexing that, the clay will start to lift. And this is where, where I said if the clay was too wet, you may have a problem. Now, what you would find probably if the clay was too wet is where the arms are, the clay may stretch. It may stretch and bend with the mould rather than popping upwards as it is there. It may stretch with it and you, you might find that the clay splits. It simply is that the clay is too wet. Don't think that you're doing something wrong and you know you, you can't manage these moulds. It, it is just simply that the clay needs to be a little bit drier. Now, a slight sticking point if you're going to have a problem will be the feet where they're there are a deeper area of the mould. So what I tend to do is work all the way around. You can see the characters nice and loose and I can just ease those out. And there we are. He's got all his features, everything's perfectly formed and every bit of detail is showing. And that's the start of building our, our uh, character up. So what you're going to do then is put that to, to one side to dry. If you wanted to use seed beads as eyes at this point, you could pop a little seed bead in the eye that you can see. Obviously, it's a pirate, so it's got a patch on one, so you only need to think about the one eye. If you want to paint in the eye, then I would suggest that you let the character dry first, which is exactly what I've done here. So, with the different colour paints, decide on the colours you're going to do everything, and then just get some nice, fine paint brushes because the detail isn't particularly... Um, large in any area and you can start to fill in. I would suggest using an acrylic paint. I'm using a chalk paint which is a, a water-based, it is a type of acrylic, uh, it is water-based and it has a very very matte finish to it. And Because it, the clay itself is porous you will probably find as the paint dries that you will need to add a second coat. So just by picking up the paint with a paintbrush and paint it onto dry clay, you can start to build up the colours. Now another tip that I could give you, and this is optional, it's not something that's definitely necessary, but you may like to do it. It just helps the clay be less porous. You could mix one part PVA glue with one part water and coat the whole piece with that mixture before painting. That will seal the clay itself and it will make it less porous. It also gives it more of a satin look finish and that, as I say, is entirely up to you. You might prefer just to go straight on with the paint and not worry about that because you will get a decent coverage with two coats anyway. So just take some time to paint in. I'm just painting a little bit of the boots and then I'm going to bring in one that I painted earlier so you can see how it progresses. And the second part to our demo will be to show you how to build up the character with the different colours straight into the mould. So that will eliminate a lot of the paintwork 
and will give you a very nice neat finish. So you can see where I'm going with that. I would let each coat dry individually in between before giving a second coat. Entirely up to you where you start, whether you start with the boots, whether you start with the bandana, it doesn't really matter. But because we've mixed that skin tone, you do not have to worry about painting the face or the hands. That is the time that you would probably not get the colours quite right and spoil what you've done. So I'm going to bring in a pirate that I've worked on beforehand. So you can see the skin tone has been pre-mixed. I haven't had to put any paint on there at all. But I am going to add some extra little bits to the features. So what I'm going to do now is just show you how I used the paint to put in the eye. So I'll bring back in the one that I was just painting on. And I'm using a ball tool. This is a very small ball tool. It's actually from a nail art set. You can pick these up quite easily from shops, um, very cheaply actually. You normally get four or five tools in a pack and they're double-ended, so you get the different size balls on each end. Great as little embossing tools, but I use them instead of paint brushes for the fine detail. So for the eye, all I'm going to do is just dip the small ball tool into the paint. You can see it's just on the end there. And literally just dot that into the eye socket. Allow that to dry before you put the little white speck in, which is going to come next. So I'll just show you that on the other prepared piece. So you could do this with a, a sharp cocktail stick, or maybe if you've got a, a pokey tool that's got a nice pointy end to it, or even a needle. Not something too fine as a needle, but you know something that's got a nice point to it would work very, very well. And I'm just going to get a little bit of white paint same sort of method. It's just much easier when you've got a tool that's rigid rather than a paintbrush to do the eye because it's such a delicate area to fill. And all I'm going to do is put a tiny little white dot onto the black and that gives the highlight to the eye and it actually makes him look as though he's looking at something. The other little trick for the face, which I always like to do, regardless of whether it's a a girl or a boy or, or an animal even, I like to give the face a little bit of blush just to warm it up. Now I am actually using a real blusher, but you could use any sort of artist chalks or if you've got things like pan pastels, you can just use those as well. And I'm using a paintbrush. You could use a sponge applicator, but I'm finding that the little brush works very well. I'm just giving it in very subtle rosy cheeks. And again, that just make it does make a difference to the finished look. Again, there's more little tricks that you can do to make this as an individual character. So just to give you a few more hints and tips, I'm just going to rub my white paint again. Things like putting spots on the bandana. Again, one of the little ball tools is perfect for this because all you need to do is just dip into the paint and put little dots all over and adding these tiny bits of detail make all the difference. You've got good control with that tool, as I said. So just dot them randomly around and it does add some nice detail for you. Another thing that you can do is add a bit of shine to his boots. So maybe on the tips of his boots there, just use the same tool just to catch a bit of white paint across the end of his boots to make them look as though they've got a little bit of shine on them. If you find the ball tools a little bit too thick, you could do it with a cocktail stick, as I have there. You could also gloss those, so maybe use uh, some of your glazes that you use for your paper craft, they would work. Um, there are varnishes available for polymer clay, you could use those on there as well. Or even maybe a, a clear nail varnish would work very well. So I think things like the, the little boots would look very nice to have some gloss on them just to accentuate them. So there you go. There's the painted version of the pirate and then we're going to move on to the, the pirate where we're going to build up the different colours separately. So for the second part of the demo I'm going to show you how to build the separate colours to create your character so you only need the minimum amount of paintwork at the end or separate decoration. Now, if I bring in one of the finished characters, this one has been painted, but I just want to show you 
um, or explain to you how to put the colours in or which colours would go first. So if you look at the finished item, anything that's on the top surface is the colour that's going to go in first. So I'm looking here and his hair covers some of the bandana and it also covers some of the eye patch. So the hair would need to go in before either of those two. The boots could go in first, but you have got an option. You don't have to start with the hair, you could start with either of those. Uh, but I would suggest they are one of those is, is definitely the best starting point. So I think probably what I will do is start with the hair. So I've got the mold here. It's just exactly the same mold. And I'm going to give him blonde hair on this one. So I'm looking at the character itself and there is quite a difficult area to work with there if you've not done this before because we've got the eye patch, we've got the bandana and we've got the hair itself and then the face. I'm going to avoid overfilling. So all I'm going to do is take some of the yellow clay and this has just been mixed from white hearty with a little bit of the yellow and a tiny touch of brown as well just to take the brightness off the yellow. There are little bits that I may miss out. I may purposely do this to show you how to make it easier on yourself to fill those in if you're not sure where you're going. But try and keep the clay so that it works underneath the bandana or the line of the, the bandana itself. And if you can work into the fringe, there's some little strands that come over into the eye area there. You can push those into place. Using uh, whichever tool you found suits for working with the clay. Um, I have mentioned it before, but if you want to use one of the Dresden tools from the Sugar Crafters set, they work brilliantly. The end of a paintbrush you can use if it's got a rounded end, a ball tool. I'm using a metal one simply because it's a tool that I have to hand all the time when I work with polymer clay, uh, but there are various things that you can adapt. So I've just put a little bit of the yellow in there. It may be a little bit tricky for you to see what I'm doing at the minute, but it will it will come more clear as I work through this. So I'm just checking that I'm not overlapping too much onto the bandana. I know there's some strands that work over the edge of it. So again, this is where it works very well to keep a pre-made model right in front of you. You can see that there's a little strand there. You can see the strands that come over onto the face. So if you do miss them, don't worry. Better to miss them out and add them afterwards, as I will show you, rather than overfilling. So we've put a little bit of the hair in place. Now you could add the eye patch now, or you could make it easy on yourself and paint that in afterwards. But because we've got the hairline in place, if you take the smallest amount of black clay, that's if you're going to give him a black eye patch, which normally we do, and then place that into the appropriate area, you can help hold that down by overlapping the area of the hair that you've already filled because that will just anchor it all down. Just be careful not to overfill that patch because when you go in with the skin tone over the top, if there's too much clay in there, you may get them, the colours to bleed together a little bit. So better to underfill slightly than overfill. As I say, if you find that tricky, you can always paint that in at the end. For the next bit, I'm going to put the face in. Now I've got leftover pre-mixed skin tone clay here. So I'm going to just roll a ball of clay and drop it over the eye patch just to keep that down. Just going to put that there like that. Now there's two reasons I put this in next. One is for the reason I've just explained. It holds down the eye patch and the hair that's already there. The second is it makes it easy for me to get that bandana in at the top. So all I'm doing is making sure that I can see the edge of the bandana, the line of it, and work, you know, just push the clay back a little bit. So I'm going to give him a red bandana. So I'm taking some of the hearty clay from the pack. Again, if this is a little bit too wet, you can leave it to dry before using it. Obviously, not totally, just five, ten minutes just in the room temperature would be fine. And then I'm going to push some of the red clay into that area not forgetting we've got the tie at the side so I can take that in as a separate piece. Now you'll notice that my pirate that's been painted has got red stripes and the the shirt does have stripes in it but I wouldn't suggest trying to put those pieces in separate this is where we've got a really good shortcut for you so even I wouldn't want to waste time trying to get those in there. You'd find it tricky trying to keep all those individual stripes in place. So make it very easy on yourself. And my best tip would be 
if you've got a pirate with a white shirt or a white shirt with some sort of colour stripes go with the main colour so we're going to go with the white and now he has got a waistcoat on but I'm going to ignore that as well so I'm just going to put some of the clay into the shirt area doesn't matter now if I overlap the flesh tone of the head this is at the back here it doesn't really matter if it looks untidy it's what's going on underneath that counts so I just turn that mold around a little bit just to find it easier for myself to work with and also for you to see where I'm going with this next stage so I'm filling in the sleeves you've got the two little posts that stand proud so you can work around those you've also got the two hands so you don't want to fill those areas so there we've got one hand there and another hand there so if you can try and work the clay to the side of that and use your ball tool or your paintbrush end or whatever tool you're using just to push away the clay from, from the hand. And we can fill those in next. I think if we get those in before the trousers, you'll see a little bit better where we're going with everything. Don't worry if the clay is a little bit down in the mould at this stage. We can top it up later. So a little bit more of the flesh. Again, look at the shape that you're filling. And rather than overfilling, take a piece of clay, roll it to a similar shape and just push, push in position there. So I've almost reformed that hand in total. And that's all it is, a small amount of clay just rolled and pushed into place. Again, you can now overlap the colour that was there previously. So we've now got the hands in position and we can move on to um, the other areas. So we've got just left now the boots and the trousers. I'm actually going to put the boots in next and then make the trousers the last piece. You may find that you find some of the colors going in in a different order better for you. Um, I think with the head, you really need to work in the order that I've shown you because of the way that works. But for the lower part of the body, there are different options. Now, because the boots also include the feet which are quite deep areas of the mold if you roll a sausage shape and feed those in you'll make sure you get that clay right to the bottom and then just break the clay off where you need it and use your tool just to push back from the top of the boot again there's a definite line between the boot and the trousers so you can see where you need to push that clay back to same with the other foot so I'm just going to feed in some of the black clay. If you've not got enough, you can just top that up. And again, I'm just pushing back with the tool to the top of the boot. So at that stage, I can now add the trousers, which are going to be blue. Once again, I've used hearty clay. This is from the, the blue pack, but if you want to use the gel food colouring to colour the white clay, you can mix your own colours as well. Now for the, the trousers themselves, I'm going to overlap the boot a little bit on the back. That just gives us a really good joint rather than everything just touching. It's nice if they overlap a little bit just to make a more of a firm joint there. So I'm just going to roll the, set, the two legs separately and repeat the other side. And when we've got to that stage, we can then start to really push down the clay into the mould to pick up all that detail. I can see, and I did I did state that I'd left some of the hair at the side, I can see the gap there where that hair's going to be. At this point, I could actually top that up or I can just add it at the end, but because I've got a little gap, I'm just going to put a bit of the yellow in there. I could have gone with the flesh tone as well and, and added the colour afterwards, but we'll... We'll just fill this to the top now, make sure we've got a nice even finish. So if you go over with the rolling pin, press down quite firmly onto the body of the pirate to really compact that clay. But on the face, just press down from above a little bit more rather than distorting the features by vigorously rolling backwards and forwards. So if you think the clay is a little bit low in any areas, then now is the time to top up. So maybe just a small amount extra in the arms. I might just add another little lump there and one there. Just so when I'm rolling over the top, I know that's really compacting down and picking up the detail underneath. And then we're going to tidy up with a fingertip again. So same method, just use the fingertip to pull in from the outer edge to the inside. 
and work all the way around. And just a reminder again, if the clay was a little bit too wet, when you come to flex the mould to get this out, if the, if the character's bending and the clay maybe is splitting a little bit, it simply is that you need the clay to have dried a little bit more. So I'm just going to start to flex. I do find if you start at the elbow, that's probably a good place because that helps lift straight away. The feet are the trickiest bit. So just keep working round. If you need to pull away from the edge a little bit more, you can. And I do find that sometimes I give this one a, a bit of a helping hand where his feet are, just to guide him out. But I can see that the, the head has now come free, the arm's nice and free there. So I think I could probably just gently lift this one out. There we go. And there we've got the main colours of our pirate. But he hasn't got any stripes yet and he hasn't got a waistcoat. So there are a couple of different options. The easiest way is to paint in those details, but if you really want to avoid painting, there are some other tricks that we can do. So I'm going to show you those now. So we want to give him some red stripes for his shirt. That's very easy. Just by rolling out some small amounts of clay, just with a fingertip. You could either roll these thinly with a rolling pin and cut with a pair of scissors, or you could just lay these into the, the stripes of the shirt. So you can see it fills those gaps there. You've got definite areas where you can see the stripes need to be. And all I'm doing is just feeding those round. So if you want a thicker stripe, just don't roll the sausage of clay quite as thinly. And you can just build up the stripes like that. I'll just put a couple onto the middle of him as well, in between the stripes on his waistcoat, just so you can see where I'm going with it. So that is a good way of adding the stripes if you don't want to paint. Now for the waistcoat, that's a little bit different. Again, if you want to paint that in, that's the easiest option. But another way that you could work is to take the mould again. I'm going to give him a black waistcoat. And I'm just going to squash a thin layer of the clay. Now you could either go across the whole area of the shirt and the waistcoat itself or just try and pick out the two sides of the waistcoat. It doesn't matter either way, whichever you find easiest. So I'm just going to go right across the centre there and I'm using fingertips just to press down to pick up the detail that's in the mould. You lift that out, you can then clearly see where the waistcoat is. Now I have picked up the shirt detail as well there so I can snip into this and just remove the pieces that I don't want. Just taking out round the edge of the sleeve of the waistcoat sleeve there and I can cut up the front edge as well. And if you repeat with both sides that way you're recreating the waistcoat and remaining to keep the buttons and the buttonholes. So I've got one that I cut out earlier so I'm just going to put those pieces to one side bring in the character that we were working on. So I've I filled all the rest of the stripes in as well. And it's just a case of overlaying those pieces exactly where they need to go. This also gives more of a 3D look to the waistcoat as well, which helps add to the, the finished result. So now he's got his waistcoat intact. The only other area that's incomplete is the, the area of the hair where we missed. So if you do find that tricky as you put the colour into the mould, so it's just this little area here. We can fill that in afterwards. So I'll do that first, and then I'm going to show you how you can turn it into a girl pirate. So any missed areas or any awkward areas, just use a fingertip to roll bits of clay. And then using a cocktail stick, I probably would suggest this is your best tool. You can then just place the bits of hair over the areas that need filling in. I just use the tip of the stick just to add a bit of texture as well to the hair so it doesn't look completely flat. So again, the other side, just break off any small amounts that you need and just fill those in. And that will give a complete look to the hair of the pirate. Now if you want to turn the pirate into a girl, that's very easy as well. I'm just going to bring in a sample something that I finished earlier just to show you. I'm going to show you how to add the extra hair. You could as well, instead of doing the blue trousers, 
I've put the flesh tone in for the legs and you can make a little skirt and that's just a strip of clay that's been pleated but you could you could easily just keep the, the rest of the mold as it is and change the hair and that's what I want to show you how to do so using the same color clay and obviously in this case it's the yellow again I'm just going to roll out those thin strips of clay so you want to make these quite fine and I find building up in layers of two or three strands at a time is probably the best way so just make some really thin strands Again, use a cocktail stick or a pair of scissors just to snip into those and then join at the top. I think I'm actually going to put three strands together for this one just so it thickens it up a little bit more. So very easy to roll it. You can feel the clay because it's drying out a little bit as well, it gets more rubbery in texture and that can actually help because it firms the clay up a little bit. So then I'm going to reattach just at the base of the tie of the bandana. Use a cocktail stick again just to push that into place to hold it. You can have straight hair or if you want to give it a little bit of a wiggle as you place that then you can give a long wavy hair and repeat at the other side. So I did make some strands earlier so I can now just repeat the same process at the other side. And if you want to build this up with extra strands you can just keep applying until you're happy. And likewise, if you want any more strands just at the top of the hair to show over the bandana, you can roll little strips and add those in as well. So that's entirely up to you. It just means that you can recreate the character in a different way. You can put your own spin on it, change the colour of the hair to whatever colour you like, add as much hair as you want and continue to build up. So now that's the character complete apart from the face and we can finish that off in exactly the same way as we did with the painted version and that's just by adding the little black dot of paint in the eye and when that's dry the white highlight and also the blusher on the cheek. So I'm just going to add the little black dot for the eye. You can see that makes all the difference. I'm not going to put the white bit on top because that's that's wet. I'll bring in the one that I made earlier again to show you. But you can add the little rosy cheeks as well. And being a girl, you can make those a little bit stronger if you prefer. So I bring in the finished one again. Let's bring in the boy so we can put the girl and boy together. So using the same mould, you have the boy version there and adding the extra hair. You've got the girl version. Just one or two other ideas for you with the, the pirate mould. This one's been done in air dry clay as well. So if you get one, hold of one of the paper mache initials, you can theme a pirate to a bedroom, put a name on there. Makes a great little ornament for a children's bedroom. Also your card making. We've got a card here. Again, you can personalise. I've used the Katie Sue uh, bunting there for that one. And I'm going to bring back the box in again as well to show you. So I'll show you this from all angles because we've got the pirate accessory mould available as well. And on there you get the skull and crossbones, you get the anchor, and you also get the parrot. And all I've done there is print out a little map and give it to, to the parrot to hold. Now you can see with this one the parrot's actually sitting up. So that's very easy to do as well. If I just turn this to the back, so you're looking at the back of the box, the little girl that we've just made, while she's wet, if we just bend her, so she's in the sitting position, she can be propped up against the box and allow her to dry in that position. You can add some rocks or some other little, little accessories around or maybe another parrot or something like that. But if you allow her to dry like that, she will dry in that perfect position for you to glue into place afterwards. Mm -hmm.